You are watching Co-op for Two. I'm Jesse. I'm here with Greg. Thanks for having me on your channel. This is your quick before you buy it review for Arama's Light, the first expansion for Subterra 2. If you want, we have reviews of quick before you buys on um, the whole line of Subterra games, so you can check those out, and as well as a very exhaustive discussion about the, the, the whole game system mm -hmm. as well on the channel. So this is a modular expansion for Subterra 2, and it comes with three components that you can mix and match in different variations. It comes with a set of new characters, a new play mode, and a set of tiles that you would swap in and out with the originals. You want to get us started on the characters? Let's look at the characters. Firstly, we have the Beastmaster, who comes with a dog. Animal companion. What more? What more? Like, like That's instant, sold. I would take my money. <laughs> so the dog has some limited actions it can do, and it can be um, like knocked out but brought back to your tile. And it, um, it's a, he's a very interesting character. Uh, so that's that's that character. Then you've got the magician who should be really awesome, but I don't think is a very good one. Um, you can swap a tile. Uh, that's already on the board with one of these. If there's enemies, it's, they don't leave, they just stay there. Um, but you have to re-reveal that tile. Um, but she does have a kind of a cool power, which is to transpose. You can switch spots with another explorer uh, anywhere on the map, which can be quite useful as well. Uh, then you've got the strongman, who's got a few interesting powers. One is um, to regain all your lost health, health points. You have to exert to do that, so you need three, so you need to have at least two health points left but you've got a seven health pool, so that will mm -hmm. top you right back up, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can destroy all enemies on your tile for your whole turn for two actions. Um, and then uh, just a little um, kind of ongoing power is that you can, your, your tile cannot collapse, which is very rare to, to find yourself in that position, but it's a pretty cool mm -hmm. uh, picture. Then we've got, mm -hmm. the last two are my favorites. Yeah. The escape artist is fantastic. Um, you have fade, which means enemies ignore you. Fantastic, but also you can ignore walls when moving so you can move all over the map really crazily Crazy. really really fun um and then kind of the 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 yin and yang part of that is that you can strike so you can kill an enemy on your tile for one action but you'll lose your fade ability until next turn so it leads to some very interesting decisions as to whether or not you should use that power or not and then i think the most powerful power character in the game you can argue with me about that is the fortune teller who allows you to draw a tile from the bag you may reveal it uh, next to another explorer, or you can return it to the bag so you waste the action, but if you want to avoid a bad placement. But if you have characters all over the, the place, you can put the tiles exactly where you need them to create a good path to the relic, or to avoid those, um, put all the tra nasty traps and things together. Um, if that wasn't enough, and that's all you really need with her, because she's very powerful, but you can also meditate. You take your whole turn, but you can draw a card, one of these random cards, and these cards are, uh, to say they're gorgeous, is, is, is an understatement. They're they're reflective, totally embossed, gorgeous artwork. Yeah. Um, but they do require actions to use, and you're randomly drawing one of these for your whole turn, and they have some pretty game-breaking effects, like removing all rubble from the board, removing all enemies, healing somebody that's not near you, and on and on and on. So there's a, there's a number of different powers, but you, you can only really draw a few during the game, and, and again, they take actions to play. So it's a bit of an it's a very interesting character, and it can lead to some Hail Mary plays and stuff. But um, yeah, so very, very interesting um, assortment of new characters. Okay, and then the new tiles, and you would swap these out with the existing tiles. We've got snakes on a one, two, and three. They start out with one snake. On a one, two, and three roll uh, of the normal collapse die, you would add another snake. As soon as anyone walks in there, they take wounds from all the snakes that are there, and then the snakes leave. So it's not so bad in the beginning, but over time, it becomes a very dangerous tile to walk into. Then there's this rock fall, which warns you the first time the trap comes out that would trigger it, it gets a warning tile, and then the second time it actually collapses. So you have a little bit of forewarning about when it's gonna collapse so you can push your luck. Then we've got uh, triples of these legion, of the, of the guardians that come out. When this tile comes out, you start it out right away with three, but it doesn't replenish. So once you kill them off, it's safe. Then we've got this explosive tile that starts out with three on it, and then every time you roll the fire on this die, one leaves. It sort of counts down like a clock. Mm -hmm. And when they all leave, this tile and everything around it takes three damage. It's sort of a massive explosion. And then every time after that you roll the, the fire, there's one damage done. So you could use it against your enemies if you, if you get lucky, if you plan well. But again, another tile where you get some warning before it triggers. And then we've got this really interesting little pit. 
if someone's on the other side where you want to go, you can just walk right out of it. They help you out of it. But if no one's where you want to go, you have to spend two actions to now climb out. It really slows you down in moving. So that's the new tiles. Old tiles come out, new tiles come in, and you can mix and match these. I think, oh, maybe not quite. You may not be able to mix and match them freely. Yeah, the um, you would take out, so this was uh, when you get the rubble roll on a one, two, or three, so you need to remove the rubbles from oh, one, that's two, right, and three. That's right. And lastly, you're gonna get the arc, which is an entirely new game mode, and this one, um, pretty interesting. Uh, there's no coming back with a relic or the relic is removed. You do still use the rule where you put the ending tile out, but now your goal is to push this evil arc. It goes into the, into the you bring it in, you know, to the temple with you and your goal is to push it all the way to- Or pull it. You can push and pull from the other end. So you're bringing it through the temple until you get to the end tile. And once you get it onto the end tile, it is consumed with the fire and it's destroyed. Kind of like the one ring in a way, you're just mm -hmm. throwing it in the fire, mm -hmm. although a lot heavier. So mm -hmm. um, it, essentially it has three health points. So it would take three damage and then go on its side, just like an explorer. Yeah. You can repair it to stand it back up. And of course you must, mm -hmm. uh, if the Vic Volcano comes out, before you, you know, if it erupts before you get to the end, you lose instantly. Um, and then it just has two actions. If you're on its tile, you can spend an action to push it off your tile. Mm -hmm. If you're, if it, you're ahead of it and you want to bring it onto your tile, uh, you it's two actions, so it's much less efficient. So you're, it's just taxing your movement economy. It completely changes the game. Uh, not quite as strategic as the base game, but yeah. a very fun little mode. Yeah, to fun little bit. So, final thoughts for me. If you like Subterra 2, and we love Subterra mm -hmm. 2, this is an insta buy for me. This mm -hmm. first expansion, even almost just for the first mm -hmm. for the five variations of characters, which change the game. But just the the tiles, the thing added mode. It just gives you different ways to play the game. Mm -hmm. Definitely recommended for me. Yeah, for me, again, those five new characters, well, four of them, I think, are like absolutely fascinating and they a lot, add a lot of replayability since that's a new puzzle. Um, the arc being a complete new game mode, not as good, but it's but it's just an interesting new puzzle as well. Adds a lot of replayability because you can play with the new tiles or the old tiles. And then of course, uh, all of these new tiles, you know, that you can mix and match with everything else is, is are very interesting and exciting. Some of them are very thematic. Um, they're, ver they're very different, so it adds a lot of new life to this game. So yeah, for me as well, because we're, we're both huge fans of the um, Subterra game, this is an insta-buy if, you, you know, if, uh, if you're a fan of that game. Yeah, and unlike some expansions, this doesn't add a lot more complexity. No. It's just more of the, it's exactly what you would want yeah. in an expansion. Just a little bit of variety, just changing yeah. the game up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, perfect. All right, we'll see you on the next review. I thought that was good. The ending was bad, but that's okay. We can live with it.